Hi guys, in today's grasshopper tutorial, we're gonna look at how to model the vessel at Hudson Yards by Heatherwick Studios. For this project, we're gonna start off by looking at the form of the building and then splitting that up using the contour tool. We're gonna to then split each of those curves with some list manipulation using SIFT. We're gonna do a little bit of debugging and then bring that all together by putting some structure around the entire building using a profile and my favorite component, the orient component. If you wanna follow along with this video, you can use the link in the description box below to download the files. If this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell so you don't miss any future videos. All right, guys, let's uh, begin. So the first thing I recognize here is that it has a pretty interesting form. And looks like this pine cone, but uh, the thing is like, I don't think you can start modeling these right away. I think you need to get the overall form first and then slice it up and then start working on the inside. I think that would be the way to go. So the first step we're gonna do is make the form, then we'll figure out how to cut it up. Okay, so how many sides does this have? Uh, let's say anything that has like a two axis of symmetry, you wanna, you know, a multiple of four and you can't go wrong. So let's just say like it has 16 sides. So let's start with a polygon in Rhino that has 16 sides and we'll go from there. So let's see, let's go and type in polygon. Let's see, okay, here we go. We got a polygon radius. Oh, I don't know the radius. I do know the segments. So I'll just put in 16 for the segments right now. And radius, uh, let's see, 100 feet maybe, right? We can always go smaller or bigger which is great about being parametric. There we go, now I have this basic uh, form. Let me copy it in the vertical direction and get maybe maybe three of them, three or four of them, let's see. Okay, so we're gonna move these. Okay, so move the geometry, which is the polygon, in the Z direction, so we're going straight up. And let's see, I always like to merge values together. This way it stays a little bit better organized. And of course the first value, like the first one on the base is not moving. So I'm just gonna say if the first one moves, zero. The second one moves, uh, let's say 100. And again, these are sliders, we can always change this. Second one moves 200. How's that looking? Uh, not too bad, it's looking all right. And of course if I loft these together, it's just gonna be straight. So we do want to add some contouring to this. So let's um, scale these down. All right, so the next step is scale. And what am I trying to scale? The, these things I just moved, these three. What is the scale factor? Well, again, I'm gonna use merge. And this time, I'm really not sure. So I'm just gonna make a slider, 0 0.25, and copy this three times. And put one in each of these. Okay, so you see what happened, like everyone shrunk down here to the origin because that's the center of the scaling. The center of the scaling should not be the origin. The center of the scaling should be the center of each individual curve. So what you wanna do is get the center, and you can do that one way is the area. The area is probably the easiest way to get the centroid. You put the geometry in and you see you get the centers right here. Then you take those centers and put them in this command and now you see it's actually scaling according to the center. So the, t uh, the one all the way on top, I can make it pretty large. Uh, the one in the middle, a little bit smaller, and the one at the, the bottom can be the smallest one. Okay, so let's start hiding some of these geometries because they're getting quite confusing. There we go. So all I'm seeing right now is the scaled version. And let's go ahead and loft these together. So L-O-F-T for loft get these together, and I have a form that kind of looks like this. Let's see, uh, it needs to be a little more curved. You see on the end here, it looks like a looks like a clean curve. Let's see if we can get that. Oh, it is curved. Uh, maybe I can just exaggerate it more, or just pull this down a bit, maybe. Yeah, so there's ways to like mess with it. But yeah, let's say, that, that's not bad, right? Let's say, let's say that's okay. Sure, let's leave it at that and that could be our form. Okay, so that's the overall form for the structure and we can of course edit this with our sliders but I'm gonna say this is the end of like step one. Okay, so open up a B rep and call this like uh, master form. 
And this way I know like what the end of the step was and what I actually accomplished, right? I got the master of form here. Now let's slice it up. And the best way to slice up a form like this, a B rep is by using the contour command. So C O N T O U R. And you know, there's so many contour commands, but let's start with the very first one. It should just, you know, it should do the trick. What's the shape I'm trying to contour this shape right here. What is the point? Now, what does point mean? It says start point. It says start points at the bottom, and this thing actually sits on the bottom, so maybe that can work. That should be okay. The direction is straight up, like I'm contouring up, right? This way I'm making slices as I'm going up. So let's see if this is already by default going up, and it is 0, 0, 1 is straight up, so we're good there. And next thing is the distance. Let's see how big should this be. Let's go back to the image. So that's a person right the, here this is better here's a person and if this is a slice and this is a slice then that's at least 12 feet um well yeah this is gonna be tough well let's start with 24 feet i'm gonna do that okay 24 is where i'm gonna start because it's a multiple of 12 and then i can always adjust up and down so let's start with that and i get a couple of cuts right if i hide the form all i see is the contours and so already this is starting to get closer just looking at this closer to to this form okay there's of course a lot of messing around to do which we're going to start right now and look at this carefully right like if i look let's find a good image to figure this out all right here this is a good one this thing goes up and down there's stairs going down there's a platform stairs going up there's a platform right what we have we don't have that we have just clear platform just one platform so we need to go up and down so how do we go up and down let's look at this you have something that's flat then a segment that goes down, a segment that's flat, and a segment that goes up, and then you're back at the beginning, right? Because this height here for this guy is the same as the one here. So essentially, if I divided everything into four, part one stays up, part two goes down, part three is down but flat, part four goes up, and then you're back at part one. So it's basically this module being repeated over and over. So if I can, find a way to split my curve into four pieces and say the first one of four always stays up, the second one goes down, the third one stays flat, the fourth one goes up, and then we repeat. That would be a lot easier to deal with. And whenever you have this situation where you're kind of trying to extract elements over a cycle, the best command you want to you can use is called SIFT. Okay, so S-I-F-T. I'll show you how this command works. But basically, I need a list of curves, and then I have to separate them out. And right now, I don't really have a list of curves. I have a list of contours, and contours are curves. But what I'm saying is I don't have a list of these curves, these guys, right? Because this whole thing is joined together right now as one curve. So in total, I have how many? I have nine curves. I don't need nine curves. I need each of these nine curves to be divided into, I think it's 16 segments that we chose. So come over here and first explode this curve. Okay, so if you explode this curve, now it's split up. Let's look at the output now. Now, you see it says there's 144 curves. There's nine lists. Each list has 16 curves. That's exactly what we want. So out of the 16, if I put these 16s in this list, I know what? I know some pieces of information. I know that the first one is I want to keep, and the second, third, and fourth we can deal with later. So let this is how you work with this guys the way the sift works is you see there's an output here one says output zero the other one says output one so if you put in a pattern say for example the default pattern here is zero zero one one what's going to happen is it's going to take the first item put it to zero second item put it to zero third item put it to one fourth item put it to one and then repeat over and over i'll show you what this looks like if i redline this out You'll see it's taken two items, put them in the zero, and the other two should be in the one. You see if I plug in the one over here, the other two show up, and it repeats that over and over. So that's not the pattern we want right now. We want a pattern that kind of looks like this, okay? If I open up a panel, the pattern should look like zero, one, one, one. I just want to take out the first of four, okay, every time. Now, if you plug this in, I guarantee you it won't work. It shouldn't. It shouldn't work because this is not a list, right? You need to send it a list. And the way you turn something that like this, a panel that looks like this, into a list is simply by right-clicking and then 
checking this one, right? Or unchecking rather, multi-line data, and that converts it to a list, and now this should work. So let's redline the output and see what that looks like. And there we go. So these are actually the landings that I have on top, right? This landing right here, the zero, one, 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 zero, one, one, one. So that's what we're doing. And so I am going to actually take this out and label it and call it a curve top landing. Okay, this way I know exactly what this curve is and I'm done with that part. Now let's get the bottom landing, right? So if this is top landing, then the next one here, this is bottom landing. Okay, so how do we grab that? We can do that the exact same way. I'm gonna copy and paste this guy down here. And except instead of being zero, one, 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 the landing is here, right? This guy, the third one, right? So first, second, third, this guy. So it should be one, one, zero, one. Let's do that, one, one, zero, one. Let's see what came out of this one now. If I redline this, I have the next one. Yay, okay, good. So that's worked out quite well. The only problem is it's at the right level as the top landing. It shouldn't be, it should be down, right? It should move down. So what I need to do is take this curve, whatever's coming out here, and move it down in the Z direction. So let's see, the Z direction, um, but by how much? How much should I move it down? And it's moving down, so I should also make sure that this is actually, uh, re I reverse whatever this uh, direction is, so it's going in the negative uh, Z. There we go, so, so Z, but going down in the Z, and now the question is how much? Well, if you remember earlier, we made the contours at 24, so if we go half that distance, it should work. So I could just type in 12, but if I type in 12, then if I change this to say 36, I don't wanna to have to go through my script again and figure out where do I need to enter the 18. So I'm gonna instead take this 24, put it right in here, and actually change the value in here. So right click on factor, go to expression, and enter this x times 0 0.5. So this will say anything that comes into this input, such as 24, gets multiplied by 0 0.5, or half, and gives you a 12. So if I commit to that, it should be a 12, and if I, you see right there, it says zero comma zero comma 12, which is perfect, and now this has moved down by 12. Can't see it, it's a little confusing, so I'm gonna plug this guy in here, and that should make it a lot clearer. You see, now you have a top landing, you have a break here for the stair, and then you have a bottom landing. All right, let's go ahead and label this bottom landing so we don't get lost. Okay. Now we have our top landing, we have our bottom landing. It's now time to make the stairs in between. Now what you could do is of course, use the sift again, take that one out, and then find a way to either rotate it or change the coordinates of the endpoints. Um, but what I'm gonna do is like, if I have the top landing and the bottom landing, really all I'm trying to do is connect them together. So let's just go ahead and do it that way. So if I get the endpoints of the, of the landings, all right, here's the endpoints of the top landing, I'm gonna hide it, okay? And then I'm gonna get the endpoints of the bottom landing, okay? And the reason I hide it is just so that the entire screen isn't full of points and it gets confusing. So let me just line these up. Okay, good. Now let's go ahead and open up some points. I find it much easier to do it this way so that you can actually, you, you know you're connecting the right thing. So if I have, if I zoom in over here, if I have this top landing and the left side of this landing, I need the right side of the bottom landing. So let's see which one is the right side of the bottom landing. It's not this one, so it should be this one. There we go. And now all I need to do is draw a straight line that goes from this point to this point. And uh, let's see, and it's, uh, it's there. It says it's there, but it's not working, okay? And I think I can guess why it's not working. Yep, okay, so it's a bunch of nulls. Nulls, 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 nulls. So, hey, other, it didn't work, what's wrong? I actually see points over here, but and points over here, but nothing actually shows up in the line. Well, let's go back a little bit, and I think the issue is here, out of sift. Let me show you what's going on. So, if you look at this, you'll see that every time it pulled something out, it made sure it put a null in the part that it took away, right? So all the zero ones have 
the actual object in there, right? Like the curve, for example, and all the ones get replaced with a null. Now the problem is you actually need to clean this up. Okay, so that's the one step we forgot to do is clean this up. So you can always come back here. It's not such a big deal. You just type in clean, clean tree. And if you hold down control and shift, you can actually drag this out, put this here and drag this and put it here. Okay, don't worry about it messing up because we still have to clean this one. So again, copy and paste or just type in clean again. It might be easier in this case, clean. And again, this goes here and this goes here in tree. Okay. The lines are messing up and I know and I see that and that's okay. Nothing we can't fix. So there we go. Now these should be clean. And when I say clean, let's see what they actually look like. So all we have is curves. See, I have four top landings for each of the, the levels. I have four bottom landings for each of the levels. That's exactly what I'm looking for. And now let's see if those curves still match up. So I need to get this point which is on the left hand side of the top and this point on the right hand side of the bottom. And when I try to connect them, they don't work. They actually go backwards, right? So what's happening over here? Well, one way to troubleshoot something like this is using point list. So if I use point list and plug these points in and let's say I change the size to five feet, you start to see that these are a bunch of zeros, right? So zero, one, two, three, and they're trying to connect to whom? If I plug in the other point, you see the zero will always try to connect to a zero. So it's going the other way when in fact this zero should be connecting to this three. Okay. So there's a couple of things you can try over here. And one of them is just using a shift. So if you shift one of these lists so that this zero, instead of being there actually moves over here, then zero and zero will connect. Right? So I'm going to try and shift that bottom list over here. So S H I F T shift list, plug this list in. And let's just see what happens if I, if I do this, right? And you see that it actually moved the other way, right? So it actually moved forward by one. I need to move backwards by one. So I'm going to shift instead of positive one, which is the default, I'm going to shift by negative one. And hopefully that fixes the problem. And yep, it did. Okay. So by shifting that bottom list, I was actually able to move that, uh, the numbers across. And now you see they line up zero matches with zero three with three, two with two, one with one. Okay. So this is much better. All right. And so this is one set of stairs and you can actually call this uh, stair one if you want. So CRV stair one and let's try again and do it with the other one. Okay. So now on the other side, I need the, let's see the right hand side of the top one and Oh, I shouldn't do it this way because that's definitely going to mess something up. There we go. So this is just to test them, right? Okay. So the right side of the top one and the, there we go. The left side of the bottom one, these two, let's see if this just works by itself or if I need to do some more shifting again. So connect this one here, connect this one here. And there we go. Excellent. Okay. So I think we're done over here, right? So again, I'm just going to replace these so that I can get rid of these points because I don't really need to have these two anymore. I don't really need to troubleshoot anymore. So this can go away and this can go away and this can go away. And all I should be left with is the actual form. See, now it's starting to come together. This is actually starting to look like the vessel, which is great. This one again becomes stair two. So copy and paste. Okay, great. So at this point, essentially the logic is done, right? You have your stairs, you have the, um, you have the landings, you have the form, and it looks pretty much like this. It looks like the outer one, right? The inner one goes the opposite direction, but now you know the logic to do the outer one. You can repeat the logic to do the inside. The last thing I want to do is actually give this some kind of a depth to this, right? In the sense that it's just wires right now. So I have a profile here that I've drawn, uh, on the bottom. You know, this is just some kind of profile that if I was able to sweep this profile across the curves, then I would actually have something more substantial to look at than just a bunch of curves. Right? So let's try and do that. And the way that I think I'm going to do this, the, the technique I've always used is orient. Okay. This has been the way I've always tried to put a profile onto a curve. And what you need is the geometry of the profile and where does it need to go? 
okay, which is your target. So let me show you how to do that. So I'm going to bring in a curve. And I'm going to say set one curve, and that's the profile here. And this is in the file that you download. So this is my profile. So I know what this curve actually is. Now the source, this is interesting, like source where, how does Rhino know where to pick up this curve from? Okay, and it's from this point right here. So I'm actually just going to type in point, right click, set one point, and bring this point in and say that's my source. Like bring it from this point and target. Now, if I just say target, which is a point, then it's gonna stay in the same orientation. What I wanna do is actually flip it, right? I want it to be aligned with this these curves. So I actually need to do something else. I actually need to input a plane, okay? So to put in a plane, the first thing I need to do is actually get this entire curve joined together, all right? And the way you do that is by merging all these curves and joining them. Right now they're all separate. The top landing, the bottom landing, and both the stairs are separate. So go ahead and type in merge. And through merge, we can take the top landing, the bottom landing, the stair one, and the stair two, and put them all together. And under my results, you see it's all jumbled up and mixed up. That's okay. This does happen. And the way you can first try to fix this, if you ever see this, is just simplify the inputs. So simplify, 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 simplify. And now you see they're not jumbled up anymore. Okay, you have a nice set of clean three trees. Okay, each tree having 16 items that you can join together. And now I've joined them together. Now they're all one curve. You see 16 became one, so that's great. And now how do I actually find a plane on this curve? What you wanna use is this uh, command right here, perpendicular frame. So this takes any curve and actually finds the perpendicular frame on that curve. But you always wanna make sure you reparameterize the input here. And the parameter, um, I don't think it matters too much. I'm just gonna try zero. And you see that you get this set of planes, right? This is a great set of planes right here. And you can actually take this and put it right here. It might work. There we go. So I took that frame, put it into the target. Now it grabbed that geometry, which is a profile from that point and placed it onto this plane right here. And let's see if sweep works at this point. So sweep one, what is the rail? The rail is this curve right here, okay? Which is this joined curve. The sections, what are the sections? The sections is this geometry that I just placed over here right now. And I'm getting some errors uh, on the top two, but overall it seems to be working. There may be some alignment issues uh, that maybe with the planes, uh, I could try and align the planes in the Z direction and see if that helps at all. And this plane comes here and see if that makes it, no, it doesn't. So there, there's some bug going on over here because clearly if it works for these three, there's no reason it shouldn't work for the rest. But overall, I would start messing around with this a little bit and you should be able to get a really nice piece of geometry out of this. Let's see, I'll just preview it a little bit better. Yeah, there we go, okay. So that's what it start, should start to look like. And yeah, it's unfortunate that there's a little bug on these two, and I don't know what it is, and I'll try to debug it. But if you follow along, who knows on your computer, it may just work just fine. But that's essentially how you start to model and get together the vessel by Heatherwick Studios. So I know this was long, and there was a lot of steps involved, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up and make sure that you download any files using the link in the description box below. And I'll see you guys next time.